thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, besides the typos, next one will spot one will have an even better reward. Do we have questions so far? <clears throat> okay, so now let's look at this picture. I told you that there are infinite ways of writing this ABC stuff. But this does not mean that there are not important constraints between them. Because I said that the thing in the middle has to be diagonal, right? So you can see this uh, if you want in a space view or in a time view. So in a space view, I'm saying that every snapshot is a linear combination of uh, basis element. But now time passes, the snapshot changes, and the coefficient of this linear combination changes, right? They, they change in time. And who controls the way they change in time are the, ba the basis element uh, from the other guy. In this picture, it's a time uh, view, if you want. There's a row view. At every point, you have a time evolution. And this time evolution is a linear combination of your basis element in time. And they are spatially distributed. And how they are spatially distributed is controlled by your basis element that is associated to that. The bottom line is that at the end of the day, the matrix is the same. You're looking at that through different bases, which means that basically you are not allowed to choose phi and psi simultaneously. If you choose one and you said that sigma is to be diagonal, the other comes as a natural consequence of your choice. Okay? Which also means that uh, uh, you can derive a very general algorithm, which I've coded up in Python in the notes and that you can play with. General also means inefficient, by the way, because every decomposition offers you a shortcut to this. And what you do is you define your psi. You can have also the, 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 the twin of this, which is from the space. It's in the notes, but I will focus on the time view, okay? So I define my temporal structure. So in a non-data-driven method like Fourier or Wavelet, you prescribe it. In a DMD, you will do the algorithm that you have seen yesterday. You will compute your temporal evolutions. In the POD, you will do it in another way. Yeah, this is just matrices. Matrices don't know if this is convective or not. It's just a matrix factorization. So I take my data D, my temporal structure, and I want to know the amplitude and the spatial one. So what do I do? I project, so I compute my transformed uh, vectors from the time domain, and because of the diagonal, what I get is sigma, uh, phi sigma. And phi sigma looks like this. So you have in the first column your phi one multiplied by sigma one. In the second, you have phi two multiplied by sigma two, etc. Okay, but we said that we want basis to have unitary length. So if now I take the norm of this column. I get already my amplitude, no matter what decomposition I'm using, right? So once you have computed this guy, you run your for loop and you compute every amplitude by taking the norms of this guy and the special one will just be the ratio between them. So you get your sigmas, you get your five and you've completed your decomposition. This works for any decomposition, any, de okay? Now, of course you have shortcuts. For example, if your temporal structure is orthogonal, no point to do this. And in the case of the POD, as you've seen yesterday, the, the diagonalization step in the correlation matrix already gives you the sigmas. I mean, they are, it gives you the lambda, which are the squared. So also no point to do, to do this uh, normalization. That would be really inefficient, and meaningless, I would say. But this is the general picture. So every decomposition fits like that, just because these are matrices, okay? They don't know uh, what is happening there inside. Questions so far? Am I going too fast or too slow? It's okay. Okay, so now uh, some classical families. I said I choose Psi. So today I've shown you the Psi of the, well, I didn't really show you. I show you that uh, the Fourier modes are in the circle, right? And that all the entries are uh, multiples of fundamental tones, okay? So both every frequency-based decomposition has a temporal structure that has a Vandermonde uh, form, okay? Uh, 
the one that you're seeing yesterday from the DMD, here you have eigenvalues that can be anywhere in your zeta plane, anywhere, and then you build it, and, and you have a different algorithms that you've seen yesterday on how to compute them. And I'm not going to review them. So you know how to compute the lambdas, and this is telling you another possibility to complete the, the, the composition. In the case of Fourier, it's the same, but now I will fix this lambda to be in the circle and to have multiple uh, in frequencies that are multiple of a fundamental tone so that they are also orthogonal. I guarantee orthogonality in, in this case. Okay? The price to pay is that you have to assume that your data is periodic. On the other hand, uh, from the POD or energy base, we've seen that, that uh, you get the, the, spa the temporal structure from, the, from K, from the temporal correlation map, by diagonalizing that. And I have given you today enough background for you to understand when this becomes this, okay? But I have introduced in a completely different framework. And I think if I have time, I will risk. I will take my notes to show it to you because I find it uh, quite uh, funny. So this is, these are my notes, okay? Page 14, if you want to follow. You remember about the convolution? We said that the convolution is this operation. But if we look at that vector-wise, this is a multiplication with a matrix that is called topics. It just uh, run over, okay? You have the impulse response and then shifts it and shifts it and shifts it and shifts it, okay? So my filter at the data is Y is matrix multiplication times U, okay? But I told you today that uh, convolution in the frequency domain becomes multiplication. So I can take uh, now my Fourier transform of the, of, the, of the input, Fourier transform of the output, and I will construct, do you, do you recognize this? This is the Fourier transform of the impulse, which is the frequency transfer function. And I told you today, this is a vector, right? So I can store this vector into, into a diagonal matrix. And now what I can do is, what I've taught you today, I look at that in the frequency domain. So if I want to revert, so this guy will be my transform, is this, okay? Hat denotes Fourier transform. Here I have my Fourier transform of U, and here you have your diagonal matrix. If I bring this guy on the other side, I have this. And what I have written is that my convolution matrix is diagonalized by a Fourier basis. This is the convolution theorem, okay? You have learned this in the, in the during your undergraduate studies, I think. So what it means is that, uh, now let's go back to, to the POD. Questions? Okay. Uh, what happens, do you know a case in which your K matrix will look like, like a convolution matrix? is a perfectly ideally stationary test case. In a perfectly ideally stationary test case, the inner product between two and one is the same as the inner product between five and four, and is the same as uh, uh, 10 and nine, okay? Because the only thing that matters is the time shift. So in that particular case, your, your correlation matrix looks like a convolution matrix, and his eigenvectors are Fourier modes. And so in this case, POD is an harmonic decomposition, okay? In fact, you can choose them to be real, so it can become a cosine transform or a sine transform, but we can talk about that over the coffee if you want. And uh, someone very recently took this idea, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful paper by Sieber, who simply says, okay, what happens if my correlation matrix should look like this, but this not really like that, because of some noise, because of some problems. So he constructs a filter along these diagonals such that he enforces the K to be totally circular, and he pushes the POD modes to go towards the, the Fourier modes. So, a uh, quick exercise. Um, this is a pulsating Poiseuille flow. It's fully developed. It's a 2D. It's a channel, so it's a very, very basic exercise. Um, I'm putting a pulsating pressure pulsation, uh, which is written as a constant times an oscillation. It is governed by this equation. Basically, you have this cause. It's a linear problem because it's fully developed. So basically, this is just a parabolic, uh, it's a neat equation if you want to see it like that. 
If you, write, uh, if you choose the right frequency, you can see some fancy shapes in the velocity profile. If you're in a quasi-steady state, it stays parabolic, but it can be really fancy. And this is an example. So if you non-dimensionalize the problem, uh, you will end up with the mercy number, you derive the problem in dimensionless form, you can find this in a dedicated notes. You can solve this analytically, and this is a very simple exercise that at least we used to teach before. Um, I don't know if maybe Ben will remove this from the from the courses, but it's okay. The point is that uh, you construct your basis uh, from uh, from the eigenfunctions of, of of this operator, then you project the problem onto that. You obtain an ODE, which you can solve analytically because it's very simple, and you obtain an expansion, which is analytical. Okay, which is coming from the uh, eigenfunctions of the operator, in this case, the second derivative, okay? And now my question for the, the when I go to a discrete word, this also fit in this framework because it's a variable separated problem. And I ask you to compare this with DFT, DMD, and POD, uh, et cetera. So uh, I think you'll not have time to go through, through all the details. You have the codes. You can check that I run a certain moment a loop and I construct my, my matrices phi, sigma, psi transpose. And then I take, uh, these are basically the ones coming from the analytical solution. Once I have this matrix, I multiply them and that is my data. And now I want to decompose this on POD, DMD and whatever. So this is the DFT from the codes that I provide you. I first compute my psi f by taking the conjugate of the FFT of the identity. And this is just because in the FFT, they were too lazy to put the conjugation. So they, 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 they use directly the conjugation of the Fourier matrix to do the projection, okay? So this is your, uh, Psi F is your Fourier matrix. And this is the modern analysis too, is the function that implements the, the algorithms, the general algorithm that I've gave you before. So all it needs is D, the matrix, and false or true is if you want to have the result sorted or not. We didn't talk about sorting the output in terms of amplitude. So you can choose. Uh, this is the, the, the POD. You compute the K, then you compute your temporal structure, and you give it to him, and this will give you the, the, the POD. Uh, this is uh, the DMD. Uh, it's just uh, I ask you to go through the code and you should recognize all the steps that were just shown yesterday by, by Professor Smith. And at some moment, you get your Vandermore matrix, you give it to this, and you get the DMD. Okay? Every decomposition fits in this framework. How beautiful is that? Uh, this is the eigenfunction, three modes. They are orthogonal in space, not in time. In time, they have all the same frequency, just shifted. Okay? Uh, that is like a sort of mean flow. These are corrections, higher harmonic. These are three modes. POD does not even want me to give to, to have three modes. It tells me the matrix is of rank two, so I'm going to give you only two. And here are the ones that it gives me, okay? Uh, in fact, you've seen that the profile was kind of flat in the middle, right? So the POD is telling me, I think you have like a flat profile here pulsating like that, and then some higher uh, order, let's say some corrections on the side to model the fact that the profile is doing this kind of strange effect close to the walls. These are the DFT and the DMD, but I want you to tell me which one is which one. So first row and second row, this is partial structure, temporal structures. Which one is the DMD, which one is the DFT? Well, this guy starts in this point and finishes in the same point. I can copy this black curve over and over again. I will have a very smooth periodic thing. The red one does the same. The blue one does the same. This one, nobody, they don't do the same, okay? The first one have been forced and obliged to be a multiple of a fundamental tone. The second were free to take whatever they wanted to take, okay? That's the main difference between, between the two. You have a question, Ben? Yeah. Sorry? an equation just with the first derivative where you have a convection where you have a structure going from left to right uh, um, okay. through the domain and this is absolutely not factorizable but there exist tricks 
Uh, for instance, if you do the um, um, space-time POD, <coughs> you could encode this structure as one of your space-time varying mode, but it's not factorizable. So I wondered uh, which extra steps would you have to do uh, in, in, in your algorithm uh, to include uh, this uh, um, convecting structure? I take notes. For the next edition of the course, there will be also this exercise. Um, so now, co frequency constraint POD, I want first to show you the cure and then I will show you the problem, okay? I, I should do the other way to convince you, but uh, I don't want to convince you at the moment. So the question here is the following. Let's take a POD. I take the data, I filter it, and then I do the POD. And my question for you is, what happened to the spectral content in the POD mode? Okay? In the deal you say, if I've removed the frequency from the data, why the POD should have it? And, and you, Intuition is right, and I will move to the next topic. But uh, I want to show it to you. So this is your data, your snapshot matrix. As we said, you have time and space. Now I will project into the Fourier basis. So now this is my frequency content in, 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 in row by row. So the row of this guy is a temporal evolution, and the row of this guy is the FFT of that temporal evolution, OK? So now here I have frequencies, spectras. And if I want to go back, I just revert to this. Uh, now, this is because, of course, the, the matrix is symmetric, and we can talk about this later if you want. Now, how do we do this filtering? We have learned today that you need a frequency transfer function, and this frequency transfer function is a vector. But I want a very democratic filtering. I want to filter every row in the same way. Okay? I want to remove, treat this, all of them in the same way. And maybe we can get to another decomposition if you remove this uh, idea. But uh, what I'm going to do is to take my transfer function and put it row-wise and copy it identically in every row. Okay? And here's the operation. I take my D, I compute my frequency transform. Now this is in the frequency domain. And now I multiply it entry by entry. So this is a sure product. Remember, filtering in the frequency domain is a multiplication. And I just multiply by this guy. So what I have now, I'm still in the frequency domain, but I have killed someone because maybe this has some zeros somewhere with the frequency that I wanted to remove. And then this is to come back to the time domain. Okay, Did, do you see this? these three steps? As I said, this is very academic. You wouldn't dare to do this uh, in a program. It would be crazy to copy paste uh, vector uh, ns times and then do this operation like that. You have much better tools to do this, but this gives you the picture, okay? Now I take my, uh, my d hat. So let's say that I have a spectral like that along the first row. It's symmetric because the data is real. And let's say now without loss of generality that I take a low pass filter. So it means that I want to focus, let's say, only in this region, okay? And everything else, I don't want to see it. Maybe it's noise, or I simply don't care. I want to remove the rest. I want to focus on this one. So my uh, copied transfer function looks like this. The, the absolute value, the modulus, is zero anywhere here, and, and it's ab approximately one here. Okay, so this is, let's say, the modulus of my transfer function. It is, it's just going to multiply by zero all these guys and multiply by one everyone that is in the middle. Okay? Well, so now you can do a little bit of math. This is really a funny one. So you t I ask you now, what is the correlation matrix of the low-pass filtered guy? And the low-pass filtered guy we've seen is, is this one. Okay? So you introduce this into that, you arrange it a bit, what, you, what you're going to have is that since the, the sure product can be distributed, you factorize the thing and you obtain here two terms. Uh, this term here is the cross-spectral density matrix, so this is like the time correlation matrix, but in the frequency domain, okay? And if you get the eigenvectors of that, you have the spectral POD. And, uh, and this one is, I denoted with a, with a, I just underline it, what he's doing is I'm taking this thing transpose, so I'm just flipping it, and then I'm multiplying it entry by entry with this guy, so I just create a box, okay? And uh, well, interesting thing is that this guy has this, shares the same eigenvalues uh, as this, sorry, not of this, as the full, as the full K, because the, the, the frequency transform here is a similarity transform, so this, as the same eigenvalues of that. And you can show that the eigenvectors are the frequency transform of the, of the POD. 
Why is this interesting? Because by creating this box, I have killed any frequency which is outside this range. And so what happens now, if this is still symmetric, I can still write this in terms of uh, is eigenvalue expansion. And uh, if I look at what happens along the diagonals, along the diagonal, I have the product of uh, positive quantities. This is the inner product of, of each complex, of each of the Fourier transform of each QD mode. Okay, and that is a positive quantity, and I'm summing positive quantities. And because of my box, I'm saying that no one will survive here. And if you sum positive quantities and you have to get zero, the only solution is that uh, you're summing all the time zero. Which means that your POD mode does not have any frequency outside this box. Okay. So if you do this uh, uh, exercise, uh, now I take again my pulsating, pulsating positive flow, but now in the pressure position, I put two guys. One is a large scale motion, is the red, and another is the black, is a, is a high frequency. So you see when the high frequency kicks in, you have a very large fluctuations. When the low one enters, this is a quasi steady, so the profile responds mostly like a parabolic. Now I give this to the POD and the POD gets really confused because of optimality. It just wants the, the most the optimal modes. So these are the spatial structures of the POD, and these are the spatial structures of the temporal structures of the POD. It's a, it's a mix. You cannot say that this blue curve is mostly linked to the large scale or to the fine scale, because it's linked to the two of them. It's a linear combination of them. This is pretty similar to the beautiful exercise that was shown yesterday by Professor Dawson, okay? And I will skip the codes. You have the codes there if you want to check the, the MPOD. But this is what happened if uh, I just filter the data so that I let only the high pass survive, and then I do the, P the, the POD, and I recover exactly the contribution of the, of the largest frequency, and I ask you to do the same for the low frequency. So you see where is the MPOD now going. Um, we tried with uh, a filter that was like that, and we've seen that we have removed all the rest. And today, you became expert on multi-resolution analysis, so you can now imagine that you partition it into different scales, okay? And you repeat the same trick. And uh, the same scales are defined such that they sum up to one. So we lose no information in time domain, okay? So I want them to sum up to one and to have no common frequency. There must be no frequency to, together with them, okay? And now, uh, if I repeat the same trick, I will ask you to do that. You will see uh, that your K is the summation of two terms, one which I call pure, and these are these guys, low with low, medium with medium, high with high, okay? In wavelet terminology, this would be approximation, this would be diagonal detail of, of scale one, diagonal detail of scale two, okay? And then you have, in this case, uh, six mixed guys, okay? Low with medium, low with high, etc., 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 okay? Well, now, here we have to make big choices, okay? The big choice is uh, the following, and you will see why I want to make this big choice. Let's kill them. We don't like them, okay? Why? Because they, because these ones are much better, okay? I, we could talk 20 minutes only on this choice, okay? And the thing is that uh, what happens between these guys is that they have no common frequency. So an eigenvector that exists here can have no frequency that exists there, and vice versa. Well, if I keep this mixed guy, the mixed frequency can come from the mixed terms. But now I force that. So I'm, what I'm saying is uh, I still want to have a perfect reconstruction of my data, but I am willing to sacrifice the reconstruction of the correlation matrix, okay? I'm assuming that my correlation, after all, has kind of a diagonalized packet. Okay? If I assume this to be perfectly diagonal, I end up with Fourier. Do you see that? Fourier is the limit at which frequencies cannot talk anymore in the correlation matrix. Okay? But I let them talk a bit, not too much, okay? so that I can now do POD in each of these. And the POD in each of these will have no common frequency. So in the frequency domain, they are orthogonal. And the frequency domain is a rotation of the time domain. So if they are orthogonal in the frequency domain, they are orthogonal also in the time domain. And that is shown in the nodes, okay? So let's say that uh, I take my MPOD algorithm and I ask, work with one scale. And what you have is a POD. 
This is with two scales, this is with three scales, and this is with empty scales. That's the limit at which the POD becomes the DFT, okay? Now, you can make some tricks and make it look like a DMD, but if you want, we can discuss about this later. Um, the point is that there is no frequency crosstalk in the, in the DFT, okay? I think I've said everything. This is the algorithm. You have it implemented in the nodes in two different ways, one more academic, one less academic, more computationally efficient. You take your data and you define your frequency splitting vector. That is the one that we've seen today, how you want to partition the spectra. Uh, and he will compute the rest of the decomposition for you. So it first takes K, it constructs some filter banks. It takes all the Ks at the different scales, very inefficient, by the way, I can show you 100 times faster way to do that, but this is really following the nodes, okay? Uh, you take all the k's, then you diagonalize each of the k's, you take the eigenvectors, the POD modes of each scale, you put them together into a single guy, and then you reshape them so that, that they are in, in the order uh, of amplitude contribution, and out of that you, you construct your, your temporal uh, structure for the MPOD, okay? So, what is the temporal structure of the MPOD? It's taking the best temporal structure of each scale, which we're not allowed to communicate, okay, and put them into one single basis. And the beauty of that is that each of these is orthogonal, okay, and you can easily show that in each of these scales, you cannot have more frequencies, more POD modes than frequencies, so you, you are 100% guaranteed that this guy will remain fit and not fat, as we've seen today, okay? It's going to be an orthonormal decomposition, like the POD1, with orthogonal uh, structures, please. Representative, then we take the a residual and the orthogonal subspace, we do another DMD, we take the, the DMD mode, which minimizes the residual, and then uh, we go again in the orthogonal subspace of the two uh, recursive DMD modes and so on. To some extent now we have also normal modes, uh, uh, modes which are also normal in, in, in time, also normal, uh, um, also gonal um, in, in, in space, and they minimize the residual or guaranteed to minimize the re 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 residual for the given number of modes. And we don't have to pre-specify the frequencies because it automatically selects the frequency which is uh, most dominant in the data. The answer will take a bit of time. Maybe we'll take a coffee over that. But the short answer for first two points, from a matrix perspective, there is only one decomposition that can have orthonormal temporal and spatial structures. And that is the POD. So if whatever the composition you have, well, it's, it's a recursive, I mean, POD can be defined recursively. Yeah. Take the first mode, which uh, minimizes the residual, go on the orthogonal subspace. Take the second mode, which uh, 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 minimizes the residual uh, um, of the residual, okay. and, and so on. I will so give you the short use, answer. So, so, so you can use this recursive um, um, algorithm also with DMDs, and you have pure frequency modes, and, uh, um, and you have uh, um, um, guaranteed uh, also normality by construction. The answer then is simpler than expected. You have, you said it, you have an harmonic mode. Here you don't have an harmonic mode. And I don't want to have it normally, okay? And you will see why. This gives you wave packages, okay? Here a mode can have a certain range of frequencies, but not one. In yours it has only one, okay? So uh, now exercise the MPD of this case, the temporal, the spectra, of the correlation matrix looks like this. You have the two peaks because of the two of the two guys. And here what you have is that your frequency is not existing in the entire domain. The frequency is starting at this time step, it grows and then it vanishes. And this cannot be described by one frequency. Okay? Exactly. So now you can split the two and the MPOD will do this trivially and you get back whatever you were looking for. Here you have the codes, play with them and uh, you will see how, what it looks like. I think that time-wise we are okay. So I want to show you just the tutorials that I gave you. Um, 
how there was a mistake on the slide <laughs> once more. So the first tutorial is the impinging jet. You will find all the details in this uh, publication. is a, is a time resolved PIV. Um, it's a planar jet impinging on a, on, a, on a flat wall. Reynolds number is quite low, I would say. Velocity is 6.5 meters per second. Sampling is at 2 kilohertz. And this is how the data looks like, stationary. So this is really, I mean, just do DFT of that, right? It's stationary. Um, you can take points in different, in, different, uh, in different probes. And this is the spectra in terms of true all numbers, so normalized, is the spectra associated to each of these probes. Of course, here, the flow is dominated by the Kelvin Helmholtz instabilities. Then as they travel down, the velocity de decreases. And so the, the amplitude, the, the spectra moves towards uh, larger scales. And if we go here, here the velocity is really, really low. And so the frequencies involved are very low and we have very large scale structures, okay? So here is how you download the data. I have uploaded into this repository. You, you just download the thing. You have a zip file, you unzip it. So these are the parameters that I will use for the MPOD. Um, H was the height of the, the standoff distance of the jet, 6.5 meters per second, this is in, uh, in meters, because I want to define my frequency splitting vectors in terms of struals, okay? And so then I compute it in, term, in terms of the frequencies in, in Hertz. Here I'm choosing, uh, uh, an, uh, I have three scales. I choose a filter order of 201, which is an acceptable uh, compromise. Uh, this is uh, for the periodic extension. I don't want to, to assume that the thing is mirrored, okay? The periodicity. Uh, so also for that, I, I should spend more time to explain you how the boundaries are handled, but let, let it, let's keep it like that. Then you can decide if you want to use the MPOD as a filter or not and you do it with the keep uh, vector. For example, in this case, I say one, one, one. It means that I want to see the three scales in my decomposition. If I put uh, one, zero, one, it means that I don't care about the, scale, the second scale. Uh, it can be killed. It should not participate in the formation of the, of the temporal basis, okay? Then uh, the argument is MPDK. You introduce this value, and then you complete it with the say, usual, uh, usual decomposition. So these are POD modes for this case, structures, spatial structures, and Fourier transform of the temporal structures. So what you see here, first mode, you have a large scale content, and this is of course associated mostly to this guy, but there is also someone in this range, which has nothing to do with this, it's mostly coming from that. And so you, you see some effect of this guy coming here. This one is, also quite a mess. This one is the worst. Uh, here you see that the dominant uh, frequency is somewhere around between 0, 0,1 and 0, 0,2. And this is mostly associated to the advection of the, of the rollers so in the jet here. And here you will expect that here the frequency is higher than, than, than below, right? Because here the velocity is, is higher. So in fact, the POD is telling you here there is something going on at, at higher frequency. But uh, how much of what you see here is, al is also linked to that? You don't know. That is the, the spectral uh, mixing problem. So with the MPOD, I can say, say okay, look, I, I really care about this range of frequencies and the MPOD will tell me there is really nothing in the, of this range of frequencies here. Most of these low frequencies are here. We knew that. Uh, and if I focus on, the, on this range of frequency, there is really nothing here. It's mostly happening there, okay? And you can choose where you want to tune your analysis. Convergence. Well, we don't sacrifice much. This is the error as a function of the number of modes you include. POD is MPOD with one scale, it's the optimal. Uh, the DMD here has problem of convergence on this very noisy data. Uh, this is the DFT, which means MPOD with 2000 scales. And this is MPOD with 50 scales, and this is MPOD with three scales. So we can get pretty close to the POD while still having time and frequency localization. Thank you, but this, I still put 2,000. I still put 2,000. Yes, you're right. Um, second test case, this was done in collaboration with uh, Dante Dynamics and the Von Karman Institute. This is a time resolved PV case of a cylinder flow. Uh, you have a wake, standard cylinder flow, but this is a rather higher Reynolds number. Uh, I think it's like up to 4,000, something like this. 
Um, region of interest is here. We sample at 3 kilohertz and we have 13,500 images. That's a picture of the, of the wind tunnel. What is the funny thing? We change the speed of the free stream. So you start and your speed is somewhere around 12 meters per second. That is the probe located here. And then after some time, just for fun, we decrease the speed. Okay? Now you know that the destroyal number should be something around 0 2. If you change the speed, you're changing the frequency of the vortex shedding. Okay? And this is done at a quite a low scale. So the flow has time to adapt. So your vortex shedding should change frequency if, you, if it wants to keep the same stroll number, okay? Here's the code, you download, you mount your thing. In this game, this is the uh, filter order. I want to keep all the scale. I don't want to do filtering here. I'm using different ranges. You see this why later. So these are the POD modes. The first mode is, uh, let's say, the large scale mode, the mean flow, if you want, which is changing because we've changed the, the, the tunnel speed. And here we have vortex shedding. The temporal coefficients have uh, this kind of oscillation. Then here we have degrees of velocity. They have this kind of oscillation. If I compute the continuous wavelength transform of the temporal structures as uh, uh, that were, uh, you do the, the CWT, the continuous wave transform as uh, was given today by Professor Dischetti, you see that uh, the, this POD mode has a frequency that is uh, following this guy. So the shedding is adapting at the speed of the, of the flow. And so is this mode linked to this frequency or to this frequency? It's a mixture of both, okay? Of course, you do the MPOD, and the MPOD tells you that you have some mode that has a lot of oscillation here and then uh, shuts up, and another one that ki uh, kicks in uh, afterwards, and the frequency content of these guys is this, and so you, you split the two things, and you can have uh, more powerful control, let's say, on, on, your, uh, on your analysis. This is the convergence, DFT, um, the POD in red, and the MPOD in blue for this particular test case. There is a repository where you can find uh, five exercises. We are uploading more. This is a working collaboration with Davide Ninni from the University of Bari. He's developing now a graphical user interface to our software, which is an executable that you can download and install. It's all for free. So I invite you to go there. You have MATLAB exercises, Python exercises. Well, here you see four, now we have five. Maybe for the next edition, we will have more. And you can play with that and maybe see if uh, this can be easily tuned to, to your problem. With this, I think I will conclude. So we saw a bit about the scope of the decomposition. You break the data into a linear combination of modes. We talked about projection in space and or in time. Uh, we have seen views from space and time. We talked about the degrees of freedom in your choice of the basis. Uh, we saw the fundamental factorization, which is uh, the same for every variable separated uh, decomposition. We saw what happened when you constrain the frequency content of, uh, of the POD, and we derived the MPOD algorithm out of that. So I think it was a quite packed lecture. I also show you a couple of test cases. So enjoy the Python codes and let me know how many bags you find in that. Thank you. <laughs>